Hey guys, some classes we had a little bit more time to review this, some less, so I just wanna go over what I was kinda of looking for here. There's no place to turn this in, it's just, um, just some extra practice. Okay, so when we're given two triangles, we can kinda of go by looks like, but if they give us a similarity statement, we don't go by looks like, we go by that similarity statement, okay? So if J was mentioned first and M is mentioned first, we know angle J has to match angle M. If then K is second, P is second, then angle K has to be equal to angle P. And then lastly, those last two are like that. Now, unlike when they were congruent, their sides have to make the same ratios. Not They're not congruent. Notice one is longer, one is shorter. So we're not setting anything equal to each other. But we could say to ourselves, the JK, this side, corresponds with MP, this side, because of the ordering. So JK corresponds to MP. We could also then say middle last KL would correspond to middle last pn and then first and last jl corresponds to mn okay so that would mean that um if i was trying to find a scale factor and maybe this is my pre-image and this is my image right my scale factor is new over old so we could set up some ratios so if the new side is MP, right, MP, I could put it in a ratio with JK, the side it corresponds to, and create a ratio that would be equal to the scale factor. All right, now here it appears that these two are similar. And I can, I can see that because all the sides make the same ratio, right? 5 doubled is 10, 12 doubled is 24, 8 doubled is 16, 11 doubled is 22. So this is definitely exactly the same shape. It's just doubled each length. Now, um, we could just make sure that they're doing the same thing. So 10 is the small side of the mom. And notice 5 is the small side of the baby. 24 is the longest side of the mom, and 12 is the longest side of the baby. So this one is definitely a good ratio, but another shortcut is to cross multiply to solve. So if I cross multiply it here, I notice that that would be equal to 120, and this is also equal to 120. So that's another way to see, did they set up the ratio correctly? This will help you in the test. If you plug in, maybe, maybe they make this X, you don't know what this is, make that X, and you can plug that in for X and cross multiply to solve. So again, it's another way to kind of plug in your choices. All right, all right, so let's check this next one. Here, 24 is the longest side of mom, long side of mom. 16 is this opposite side, which is a little bit shorter. And here, wait a minute, 22 is not on the baby, but five is on the baby. So I think we found the one, this is our answer here. We could have also detected this by cross multiplying to solve. So if we cross multiply here, 16 times 22 is not equal to 25, 24 times five. So that's 20, 120 up from this. And this one would be something very different. I don't have a calculator, but I guess I could do this by hand here. So 292. Yeah, so since that is not the same, now these would be the same, 110, and this is 110. This is 80, and that's 80. All right, what about number three? So this is saying dilate from a center of B a scale factor of one fourth. So that would look like that, or we could have also shown it like this. So that means B prime is gonna stay at the same location and um, 
A will change though. So I cut that in half and cut it in half again. This will be the location at A prime because I shrunk it, right? And I could do that with A. And notice that would change the coordinate of A to A prime. And now I can do that with C. C was here and I'm gonna shrink it by one fourth. So now that's my new shape the dilation of one quarter, so it's much smaller, from B. Now it, it asks, redraw your shape. So here's our shape, right, A, B, C. And now do a dilation um, of a scale factor of one third from C. Okay, so now I'm gonna shrink it to C, but I'm gonna cut it in thirds. So C prime stays in the same spot. But now this, this would be my new B would move here to B prime and A would move here to A prime. And so this would be my new location. I'll use a different color. And so notice it's, it's, they're very similar, but I'm shrinking it from C instead of from B. Question four, they are saying dilate with a center. If you know that you're dilating from a center of zero, zero, then you can do this just with the coordinates. So I gave an example here. So if our scale factor is one half, we can just multiply each by one half. All right, so half of 22, half of 11, half of negative six, half of negative two, half of four, and half of 16. That should work. Now you can graph this and then graph the smaller version like we did up here, but you don't have to because now this one I'm um, dilating from the origin. So it makes a pattern in the coordinates. All right, now question number five, we try to remember how these coordinates change. So when we think about reflecting over X, if I took the coordinate three, one, and reflected it over the X, it would now be at three, negative one. So we say to ourselves, x didn't change, three is still three, but the y value changed signs. So we were gonna do the same pattern here. X didn't change, so I keep that, but the y value has to change signs. All right, now let's think about reflecting over the y axis. So maybe I have that same coordinate, three, one, but now I wanna reflect over the y-axis. So now this would be the coordinate negative three, one. Notice this time my x value did change, it changed signs, but my y value one stayed one. All right, so if I mimic that pattern, x changes signs, so the 14 changes the sign, and the y value stays the same, so negative eight stays negative eight. Now let's think about what happens to the coordinates when we rotate 90. So if I have a coordinate three, one, and I rotate that 90, then this will make a 90 degree angle and I'll now be at negative one, three. So let's think about what happens to that pattern here. It looks like they swap spots, right? So it looks like they swap spots. And so the negative one is now over here, ooh, right, three is now here in the Y location. So the X is now here. But this Y is now um, over on this side, but it changed signs. So let's mimic that pattern here. We're gonna swap spots. So I'm gonna swap my coordinates and then I'm gonna change the sign of the coordinate on the left. Now, what if I rotated 180? So that would just be 290. So again, I have the coordinate 3, 1. Rotating at 90, now I'm at negative 1, 3. Rotating at 90 again, now I'm over here back 3, down 1. So if I'm comparing these coordinates, it looks like everything stayed the same, except everybody just changed signs. So to mimic this pattern, the seven is now negative seven and a negative four would be positive four. Okity dokity. What are they looking for here? Well, they're trying to get, uh, this question tries to help you practice naming. So let's see, F, G, H are these vertexes, right? So they're naming the mom 
So they named mom by doing the small and the medium. So we have to mimic that same order with the baby and the teen. I got to go small and medium of my baby, F-I-G. Then to name the teen, I got to go small of the teen, medium of the teen, G-I-H. Now, I don't have to go in that order, but if mom is in that order, the others have to fall in that same order. Notice something else as well. G is the right angle of mom. I is the right angle of the baby. I is the right angle of the teen. You can use angles as well to make sure that you listed the corresponding side. So now let's think for a minute if mom was ordered in a different way. So mom was ordered GHF. Well, if that was the case, I named the medium side of mom and then the longest side of mom. So I need to mimic that same order with my baby and teen. The medium side of my baby, the long side of my baby, this would be IGF. Now with my teen, the median side of the teen, the long side of the teen, that'd be IHG. Once again, double checking the angle they have in common. Mom has a right angle at G, so the uh, baby has it at I, teen has it at I, so they all the right angles should be at the same location in the ordering. All right, last one like this. We're going to name mom in a different order. Mom's name is HFG, so they ordered the longest side and then the smallest side, mimicking that pattern with the baby. The longest side, oh, no, I got to start this side. The longest side, and then the smallest side, GFI. Now with my teen, the longest side, then the smallest side, HGI. Double checking that right angle just to be sure. Mom's right angle is at G, and the babies are at I, and we got the right location on there. We're good to go. All right, finishing up with some algebra, let's set up these equations and solve. So if I take this same, you can redraw the shape or use this picture. Fi is eight and ih is 13. What is gi? So that's our altitude. Boo, splat. We noticed that if we call this a and b, then a very consistent pattern emerges. Why does this pattern work? Well, A is the small of the baby. X is the medium of the baby. X is the small of the teen, and B is the median of the teen, medium of the teen. So that's why this formula works. Now, if we call A 8 and B 13, we can set this up to solve. So we get X squared is equal to 8 times 13. All right, then just depending, you know, whether they want me to leave my answer like that or not. Now, next question, I'm just gonna reuse this same picture. FG is 10, okay. GH is 14. What is FH? Now, um, I could try to set up some ratios, but right, this is uh, the, the um, third side of a triangle, and I know two of the three sides. So to solve for FH, I would take uh, 10 squared plus 14 squared. It has to be FH squared. So 100 plus, um, I know what this is, but let me just double check. Yeah, 196. So I got 296. So that's my answer. Now they might make that answer a little different, so don't forget to turn it into a decimal to compare. And now they wanna know what is FI. So let's see, what information do we have? So we know this is 10, this is 14, 
the whole thing is the square root of 296. So we know all the sides of the mom. What do we know about, yeah, the baby? Let's make that X. So we know the small side of the baby, small baby, and we know the long side of the baby, 10, long baby. So let's put that equal to the mom's. So I'm gonna go small mom, longest side of mom. So the small side of the mom is 10. The longest side of the mom is what we just solved, the square root of 296. So we can cross multiply to solve. So we have the square root of 296 times x is equal to 10 times 10. And I'm totally happy if you turn that into a decimal, no worries, but I don't have a calculator. So I'm gonna have to leave my answer like that. All right, last two. Um, well, we're, I should have put this little symbol on there. If it's set up like this, well, look at this as my mountaintop. And you might want to twist your page. We said the left side of the mountain, this is where the snow is, right? The left side of the mountain can be in a ratio with the bottom of the mountain on the left. And the right side of the mountain can be in a ratio with the bottom of the mountain on the right. So we can set this up side X, bottom 8.6, side 24, or excuse me, 27, bottom 12.1. And now we will cross multiply to solve. So we get 12.1x is equal to 8.6 times 12.1. Hmm, I really need a calculator. I don't have one. 6, 12, 7, 0, 8, 16, 9, 6, 10. 14. Okay, so I get 10406. Hope that's right. And I'm going to divide by 12.1. Now I don't have a calculator. I'm not going to do that. But again, I got my answer. Whatever that is in a calculator would be my final answer. Okay. So last question. Let's cross multiply here to solve. Let's see what we get. The first one. And then the other one. All right, so we're going to distribute, making sure to distribute everything. So that's 32x minus 32, excuse me, x squared. And I already got that wrong. Well, let's fix it. 4 times 4x, 4x times 4x is 16x squared. Yes, okay. Now this is 12x squared, and this is 18x. All right, now let's clean this up a little bit. If I have 12x squared on this side, I can move it over here. And that gives me 4x squared. And I still have something left over here on the right. Now, what else now? I could move this over here. So if I move the x squared over here, I'd get 4x squared minus a total of 40. That's 50x. So when would that be zero? Notice I could take out an x. I could also take out a two. Two x minus 25 is zero. So when would this be zero? Well, whenever you get zero, right, in a calculator, it means you either this was zero or that was zero. Two, one of the two things had to be zero. So if two x equals zero, I get x is zero, but that's not gonna work. My, that's just gonna give me nothing. I can't have that, so that's my extraneous answer. All right, so um, what else would it be a possibility is this is zero, and that's where my answer lies. So I could add 25 on both sides and get my answer. What is half of 25? Well, half of 26 is 13, so that'd be 12 and a half. Nice work, guys. Good luck.